hello my people good morning welcome back to our channel we are here again with another obenge information and this one is coming from ken okonkwo kenneth okonkwo of course ind you know he's fighting to the nail to help put to bring his brother and his party member <laughs> to reclaim mandate in nigeria ah the contraption is a dirty place well please just hit the like button so that we can continue what we are doing good to go now listen to kenneth okonko as he explains the faction in labor party many of us have been thrown into confusion concerning the whether there is faction and but remember and if there is any faction then tunubu is sponsoring that faction trying to put them in this area cause confusion within so that p2b would not continue uh the fighting in petty in electoral tribunal all right let's hear him out there is no faction in labor party by the law by our constitution because our constitution is very clear you cannot stand up and start parading yourself as a national officer there are processes by which a national officer evolves the first you must be elected by the national convention and i'm talking about article 13 1 b i v you can check it in the labor constitution and then even if there is a sudden vacancy in the party it is still the national executive council that will replace the vacancy and i'm talking about article 13 2 b x vi you can check it in the labor constitution so somebody cannot just walk from anywhere and start telling you he's the national chairman of the labor party and then you start ascribing that it's the faction you're free to say anything so please we just have the legitimate party officers that are meeting in the national party house now these are the different leanings of labor party you have the tuc you have the nlc then you have the national working committee then you have the national convention please the people you call faction which of this leaning is backing them up you know when they came in here to break into this office and what they did was illegal they said there was a purported ex parte order excuse me and i talk as a lawyer if a judge or a court gives an order you as a human being do not have the right to enforce it you cannot take the laws into your hands everybody is expected to obey the order of a court if the people that are concerned do not obey the order you go back to court for courts to enforce their order if you go and break in yourself taking the laws into your hand you are a criminal that has committed a criminal offense breaking into people's property is a criminal offense so they criminally broke into this office and that was why nlc called them rodents and i agree and they brought insecticide to fumigate this national office and threw them out now when since they were thrown out did you see them here because they know what they did was illegal they used thugs they use the people, their paymasters, because they are now a department of another ruling party that is sponsoring them. As they said in this press conference, all they are looking out for is money. That is why I call them politicians of convenience and politicians of fortune. Here in Labour Party, we are politicians of conviction and politicians of fortitude. The whole idea of what they are doing is they are being paid so that they would distract us from chasing tenaciously our presidential mandate that was stolen from us they are just a distraction to make sure that we do not focus on reclaiming our presidential mandate and we are not going to succumb to that cheap blackmail so they are like i said the nlc say they are rodents i call them political clowns my principles say it is a display of rascality and so we cannot succumb to those blackmail. Please, stop referring to them as faction. Because I will ask you, on what authority? None of them was elected by the National Convention. 
none of them was elected by neck to replace any vacancy these are the only reason and before you remove the national chairman you have to get to third of the national convention not even neck and some group of people are purporting that they have removed the national chairman okay the so-called interim order which i will come to did he give any of them the right to assume the leadership of labor party and the court is not supposed to interfere in the internal affairs of any political party and i quote the case of suleiman and apc 2023 five nigeria weekly law report part 1877 in that case supreme court made it clear that you cannot interfere in the internal affairs of a political party the supreme court made it clear again that a court that does not have jurisdiction cannot interfere in any act of the political party and jurisdiction is where the cause of action arose now this so-called suspension arose in benin in uh, edo state what has the court in fct to do with an issue that arose in edo state now look at the trick they want to tell you it is not about what happened in edo state it is about one allegation of crime go and read the originating someone and i have it here the first paragraph was talking about what happened in Edo State. The originating someone filed in FCT court. That is enough for the court to decline jurisdiction. That is the only civil issue that was there. And the court in Edo has given a restraining order. Restraining anybody from tampering with the work of the national officers of Labour Party. And that order is there. The court in FCT has coordinate jurisdiction with the court in Edo. And so, if you have two court orders, you have the right to choose anyone. Two court orders of coordinate jurisdiction. You have the right to choose anyone that you would want to obey. Especially when you know that one obviously has no jurisdiction. And now, a judge used the instrumentality of an ex parte order to infringe on the civil rights and obligation of a Nigerian citizen. This is illegal on its own. An ex party order is the order of a court on the application of a party without notice to the other party. So it is an order you get without hearing from the other party. You and I know that the law is that you cannot punish any Nigerian citizen unheard. It's against fair hearing. Section 36 makes it a fundamental human right that every Nigerian citizen is entitled to be heard before his civil rights and obligation is tampered with. Section 36, subsection 1. Then, section 36, subsection 5 made it clear when a Nigerian is charged with a criminal offense, he is presumed innocent until he is proved guilty. But look at a court using an ex parte order to condemn a Nigerian to punish a Nigerian when you have not even heard from him. That is legal blasphemy. So the issue here is that that is an abuse of ex parte order, which Supreme Court has been hammering on. If you want to use ex parte order, you use it sparingly to defend an applicant from an injury of a great nature, from an irreparable damage that will happen to him before you hear the other party. I give you an example. Government wants to demolish your property. And you know they've not given you notice. And you know they don't have any right to do it. They just want to victimize you. You have the power to go to court and get an expert order to stop the government from destroying your property. Because if they destroy it, it will be an irreparable damage to you. And it has to be so urgent that the government wants to do it within seven days, meaning the court will not have the opportunity to hear them before they do it. That is when you use ex parte order. But in this case, the judge used an ex parte order to cut off the head of a human being. A political party is a human being recognized by law. And the national chairman is the head of a political party. So using the ex parte order to tell a national chairman not to do his work, punishing him, for nothing 
an innocent man. That's what the constitution said. That has not done anything. And you have not heard from him. Now, let me tell you another very funny thing. The police purported reports, which they are parading, which they are next. The police itself say it's a gossip. And nobody should use it. A gossip is a casual report about people detailing information about them which have not been confirmed to be true so the police itself say in the, the police report and i'm talking about paragraph five of it he said please this is for information only nobody should use this report the police even say they will not be held liable if anybody uses this report so what police cannot confirm is true because they've not heard the other party a court relied on it without hearing the other party to punish the party. Is that not ridiculous? So what's the bottom line of the situation? The, the question you asked good. About? The bottom line is that there is no faction. You were in this particular meeting that is held. You saw the chairman and secretaries of all the states. The quorum of any meeting in Labour Party is one third. So if you look at the composition of the membership of NEC, and I am talking about Article 13, 2B, 2A. You will see the composition of NEC. You must form a quorum. If you don't have the chairman and the secretaries, you don't have, you saw the National Working Committee. Which quorum do you have to start parading yourself that you are doing a NEC meeting in Bauchi? It is criminality. They are impostors. They, they are not members of this party. They've been expelled by the legitimate authority. NEC, the ones that we are there before. So, on what basis are they doing that so-called neck in Bauchi? Like I said, you saw the people here, physically, the chairman of chairmen talked. So, on what basis? So, please, that is a show of impunity, criminality, illegality, corruption, and they are doing it to satisfy their playmasters, just to distract us. Thank you very much. You can attest with me that uh, what he's saying is the truth if you followed us to this point. And I know hmm, if Nigeria is a sane country, it wouldn't even be very hard for Peter B to reclaim his mandate. But the way things look, oh my God, it looks almost impossible because the lawyers, their pockets are filled up with jagabans, money, pounds, dollars, name it, euro. Is a dead He's a drug baron. He has money. But I would stand here to tell you that he buys everybody. He, he buys many, but he cannot buy everybody. You know it. Yes. You cannot generalize this issue. He can't buy all the lawyers. He cannot. I know. So let us keep watching and waiting. Thank you.